right back. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech, and it's Wednesday noon. That's what we do. And uh, we have we have on the screen, we have uh, Winston, Winston uh, Welch. We have uh, Cynthia Sinclair. We have we have Stephanie Dalton. We're all here together. We're going to talk about Corona. Uh, let me let me open it by say uh, by saying, you know, we hear about the possibility of flattening the curve. So you guys, is the curve flattening? Is the cur curve flattening in the U.S.? Is the curve flattening worldwide? Is the curve, flat curve flattening in Hawaii? Stephanie, is it? I think uh, that Governor Cuomo tells us his curve is flattening for um, hospitalizations, not yet for deaths. D.C. is waiting for the peak. Their peak is uh, the 20th next week. So there, uh, everything's on hold in their med care hospital systems, um, and they've canceled everything through April, and including May one. And uh, so they're waiting to see what's going to happen in what five days, and that's when they should have their peak, and then they'll be making more decisions after that. So um, I don't think they're overwhelmed in any way, like New York. You know, they say um, New York's the worst. So, um, well, I mean, you know what. Actually, one question is, do we have any uh, reinfection process anywhere? Uh, Winston, we got anybody going back up? I thought maybe we had some of that. Uh, last time I talked to our correspondent in Japan, he said, uh, you know, it was actually getting worse. And uh, I think Singapore has had a bit of a, a reinfection, uh, not, notwithstanding, despite all the wonderful efforts that it has made, it's been very clever. Um, but there are other places too. You have a sense of whether we are seeing the phenomenon of, uh, of increase in infections and deaths? I think that we're in many ways just at the beginning of, uh, of this throughout huge portions of the world. I mean, we're seeing Russia really ramp up now uh, and yeah. it hasn't, we're not getting any information out of the subcontinent in India or Africa or Latin America really, except Ecuador where they've had some really tragic um, news, but we're, we're, I'm not hearing a lot from there. And it could be just that we're so obsessed with what's going on in America. We don't, but um, the, the America seems to be a, a bright spot um, in, in some ways that the, the infections are seem to be leveling off or, I mean, it's, it d depends on the state. And as we saw in the newspaper today, Hawaii's the third lowest state. We're very lucky we get 36 per 100,000 versus New York, which was 1,000 per 100,000. And New Orleans was about uh, half that 400. 40 or something like that. So, but Japan, Singapore, Taiwan, they're all seeing resurgence because maybe they, it's people coming back as, or migrant workers. And uh, we're going to find all kinds of leaks in the system. Uh, but since they're at the front, they're going to probably plug the leaks sooner than we will. Yeah, and it's, it's troubling. Uh, and uh, your point a moment ago, I think it's worth uh, dwelling on for a minute. <clears throat> that is, uh, you know, the, the Trump, of course, uh, he's, he folds in on the country. Uh, the media, it folds in on Trump and thus on the country. We're not paying enough attention to the global phenomena that, that are going on all over the world, uh, up, down, whatever it is we need to know about it. Remember 1919. Remember how the Spanish flu went to Europe. We thought we'd beat it. It came right back. And we mm -hmm. had this huge reinfection in the country it was worse than the first one. Um, so we really care. We care about what happens outside the U.S., uh, unfortunately, Trump doesn't. Uh, so, you know, uh, Cynthia, you know, what what, what about that? Uh, what about Trump's uh, shoving off on the World Health Organization? Is is that a good idea? Should we sort of ignore what happens with them and with Europe and Asia and Africa and South America? Uh, or is that a big mistake? It is a huge mistake. Um, he has cut all the funding to the World Health Organization. And we need to remember in the very beginning, the World Health Organization is the one that was warning us that we ignored all of their warnings. Also, they wanted to give us lots of PPE, the masks, the gowns, 
all of the things that are so important, the testing, the test kits, all of that. And yet Trump said, no, I don't want it, <laughs> which is just crazy. And then the first set of test kits that we had were faulty. And so you've got to wonder why and exactly what company was it that was producing those test kits? You know, I trust the World Health Organization over some individual sort of maybe uh, connected to Trump going to make money on the whole deal. So I'm really concerned about the World Health Organization being left out of this whole picture. Yeah. So, uh, Winston, you know, there have been um, various discussions, controversies, if you will, about whether we should uh, whether whether we should listen to the business organizations involved in Trump and some of Trump's family and advisors when they say it's time to go back. Um, in fact, uh, to go further, he says, I don't care what the governors say. I'm in charge here. I have absolute power. I want to go back work right now. Um, yeah, that sounds in the context of this discussion. And I know you talked about this in the last in the last hour or two on Trump week. Uh, that sounds pretty dangerous to me. Can you can you tell us the status of that conversation and where it's pointing and what the risks are? Well, I mean, you have someone who just says he's in charge of everything, which is not true. It, it, it's, it's, it is at the local level. That's, it's, it's very clear that, that, that the, the power rests with, at the local level to restart things. It doesn't mean that there may not be some attempts to blackmail states or uh, maybe even corporations to get uh, restarted and whatever that means. But these uh, companies also have the reality that they have workers and maybe the workers will be blackmailed. I don't know, no more stimulus checks or no more something. But you remember when the when the pilots union first started saying, we're not gonna be flying to China anymore. Well, just try and start United Airlines without pilots. It doesn't really work or any airlines or any company where the workers are saying, this is dangerous for us to proceed here until we can guarantee that workers are reasonably safe. Um, so I, it's it's a non-starter until we have some uh, fact-based um, information forward. And that includes a lot of testing. It includes huge num uh, numbers of reduction in, in, in active cases. And nobody knows, but it's not going to happen by May 1st. Um, that's for sure. Well, what do you, uh, Stephanie, what do you think he's going to do? You know, we see this over and over again where he, he kind of tips you off about what he's planning, what he's thinking, and then he keeps repeating it, you know, with a crescendo, and he has all his base repeating it, and Fox News repeats it, and before you know it, he takes action. It's like the World Health Organization. He, he gave us a, a leading indicator on that. So now he's giving us a leading indicator on, well, you know, the business guys that I talk to, they're more important than the health guys. So ultimately, we have to open up the economy again. And I have my, my son-in-law, you know, he tells me what to do. So, <clears throat> you know, he, he may very well say any day that as of a certain magical day, as a magical moment, we're all back to work. And I want all you guys out there, go out to work. And it's, you know, this is your president speaking to you. Are people going to do that? Are the governors going to do that? Or are they all going to say, no, you're not in charge and we're not listening to you. You have no credibility. Uh, what do you think will happen? It's a hard question. What do you think will happen when he does that? Well, I think we know for sure now that his self-interest takes priority over the the interests of the nation and, or the citizenry, so that he's going to be operating on that agenda, which will be reinforced by his committee, which has only business people on it, those who have investments in that. No, no people, no scientists, no data people who can make recommendations based on what what is the condition of the year, this virus and what are the chances that this sucker is going to come back on us as it did in 1990. It was so good that you brought that up because that second wave took out more people than the first one did. And so we should be learning from that. And with that learning requires data and more testing and um, the scientific uh, uh, points rather than his opinion. So I would say that we're all in jeopardy. He already seems to have this May 1 uh, date in his mind, and that might be his target that he's going to lean towards. 
and try to get people out. Fortunately, there are um, some exemplars here like Governor Cuomo and the coalition of the Northeastern states so that there may be some uh, stop gap here or some uh, you know attention getter that can say, halt, wait, it's not ready. And we're making decisions based on data and the, the progress of this disease and the possibilities of it uh, returning. And so we may get some some uh, protection from uh, that that force field. That force well, field. Stephanie, are, are you going to? If he tells you it's May first, and it's he, can, he tells you it's okay. I talked to my business guys and and you know anonymous medical guys, and it's okay for you to go out now. I want you to go 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 to the opera. I want you to go you know go to go to group meetings. Uh, I want you to go to the store, not to worry about. Are you going to do that? Will everybody here? in our little group of four, who is going to listen to him on May 1st and go out and do what he says, will, will, will you raise, raise your hand? Let me go get my orange Kool-Aid jug here for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I left it over there. Let me put Let me my a, a couple of <laughs> mega gallons. No, I mean, no, we learned. Beautiful we learned gallons of orange Kool-Aid. 1919 was millions dead because of the second wave. So why in the world that has not been brought up? And as I, 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 you know, and so Fauci's there and the woman is there, Dr. Bricks, and hopefully they will be bringing up some issues as we get- Well, let's, to let's assume, let's assume, uh, Cynthia, let's assume that Trump is, um, is moderated somehow. And he says, I want you, go, you guys to go back on May 1st, but you know, I want you to wear masks. Actually, he never ordered masks, did he? He refused to order masks. He never did that. He said something about, I can't do that. It'll create bank robberies, which was really crazy. Um, so uh, suppose he gives you a moderated kind of, you know, halfway approach on May 1st. Is I want you to maintain whatever your governors say in a way of distancing, uh, take all the precautions, but go out, go shopping, go make an economy. Uh, would that work? No. I don't believe it would. And, you know, Governor Cuomo in New York said something that I thought was pretty striking. He said, you know, the numbers are somewhat stabilizing, but it is stabilizing at a horrific rate. They still are losing 700 people a day. So, yeah, they're not losing 1,500 anymore, but 700 is a lot of people. So, yes, it's stabilizing, but it's if we were to get a second wave when we're already overtaxed to begin with, then we've created something that there is no stopping and that there is no way to help. So yes, all of our mitigation stay at home stuff is working, you know, but it's only two weeks away. And yeah. we are well, just now seeing things to ramp up in states like South Dakota. Where that okay, Winston, huge... Winston, what time, What? when would you think is an appropriate time? Forget about Trump's, uh, you know, magical knowledge here. Uh, when is an appropriate time for us to start working on rebuilding the economy? And how, how do we do that? It's a complicated question, but what are your thoughts? Well, you know, it, it's, it, it is it is a $10 million question, but basically the administration has no credibility here. There's zero credibility. And so what we're seeing is this new federalism that's come about. So when Governor Cuomo, along with the Northeastern states that he's allied with, and Governor Newsom, along with the West Coast states, they forgot Hawaii. I think they'll remember us um, somewhere down the road. But uh, when they say and what they outline as safe and reasonable, they don't want to starve their economies any more than anybody else. It doesn't matter whether you live in a blue state or a red state. People want the economy to work. So it's just how do we get it to work safely? So I'm going to say what they're not being held hostage by um, a man who um, is 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 intent on something. I get I get it. He wants to start the economy again, but we can't be subject to um, a non-reality based uh, bringing back and, and stimulus to to get this economy moving again. I'm going to look for what does let's make it easy. What does the governor of California say along with Governor Inslee and uh, the governor of Oregon? and go by what they have to say, because they there's 50 million people right there and they're not gonna jeopardize their citizens um, 
I, I would hope. I mean, certainly. I, less likely to jeopardize their citizens than Trump. Less Trump likely. would jeopardize us all. Uh, even knowing it's life and death, he would he would send many of us to our deaths, I think. Um, but, you know, um, the, you know, we have this vaccine thing and uh, everybody says, oh, the vaccine will be here. It's like the train is coming down the track and we and we figure, well, 18 months that this is like it'll be here at the station in 18 months. That's not a certainty. Um, we we don't we have candidates, but we don't have any anything that actually we know it works, um, nor do we know that it's safe. And there's a lot of work to be done. And there's a lot of collaboration. We had a show last week involving collaboration on a, a, a drug, a, a, not a vaccine, but one of those uh, drugs, therapeutic drugs, between a Chinese, uh, an ethnic Chinese person here in Hawaii at the, at the School of Medicine and a, a buddy of his in Wuhan. Um, so the collaboration is, is all over the world. I mean, the Germans are working on it, the French are working on it. I mean, there are scientists who are everywhere working on it, but there's, we're not sure who's gonna come up with it. My own view is it's probably gonna be, it's kind of invented out the vaccine outside the country. <laughs> because I, I really wonder if we can collaborate well enough with this administration and mm -hmm. without the funding. Um, but, you know, my question to you is, but isn't it, isn't it clear that we can go out again, we can have our economy, not worry about it, uh, shake hands, whatever you need to do, only when we have a vaccine. And that for all, all the predictions we've heard is 18 months. Uh, isn't that when it's safe, when you, you don't have to worry about these things? And any time until that time, you have to be careful and paranoid about little virus bugs everywhere in our world and on all the people you know. Um, what do you think, Stephanie? When are you gonna feel safe? I agree with you, Jay. I think once I can go get my shot, I'm going to be fine. And so is everybody else. But in the meantime, we have a year here during which I don't know who's thinking about this or not, but and maybe not the president. He thinks we're all going to Macy's coming back. All these places are coming back. That's not going to happen. There's we have got to adopt a new paradigm of our lives. Everything is going to be different not just retail, but also the education has to be different. Everything after this, what's gonna turn out to be six months to a year of this isolation and working through um, online is gonna result in new ways of thinking about how the economy is gonna work. And I think there's gonna be some interesting breakthroughs. I think this could be a very creative, prosperous moment for us to bust through, to do things in a new way, really truly use the 21st century's uh, well technology. indeed indeed that's true it's not only after the vaccine it's now people are inventing innovative things all the time and it may not mm -hmm. you know restore the economy to what we hope um, but at mm -hmm. least it'll 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 go in that direction and we'll be using technology like like zoom you know like well like like think tech and uh, vmix call like this right now and there'll be more of that in you know in this period before comfort and in the period mm -hmm. after we have the vaccine but Cynthia, you know, um, my, my concern is that we have risks during this period. If it's a year or 18 months, you know, there are people who are really getting tired of staying home. There are people who have no money. There are people who, you know, don't have the benefits of this $2.3 trillion plan, which has flaws in it. Administrative bureaucratic flaws, we already see that. Not everybody is going to be happy. Some people are going to be at the brink of starvation. Uh, some people are going to have a, you know, a psychiatric decompensation uh, stuck at home. Some people will have, um, they will have uh, domestic violence. Some people will go out in the street and do crime because they have no other choice. They're desperate. So what, what are the risks there to our society? What are the risks ultimately to rebuilding it the way we want uh, in this period? Anywhere from a few months to a year to 18 months, whatever it is, what are the risks? Well, I think we could do a whole show on the risks. I mean, how many more minutes do we have left in the show here? Because the risks are that high. And then there's people like me who can't take vaccines. So I would be even more at risk depending on how things, so, and all of the people that are like me that can't take the, vi the vaccines without actually getting the, the, um, the virus. So there's a lot of things that need to be taken into account 
And like you said, that domestic violence is just already off the charts. And you know, that's my wheelhouse. So I've been mm -hmm. watching the numbers of domestic violence reports and it, it's, in, it's crazy how much higher it is now with people being stuck at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, in that regard, you know, I think that we need to start thinking about all of the properties that are out here on vacated. Okay, Ala Moana Center, our huge shopping center here in Honolulu. There's nothing going on up there. It's all that space. Somebody's paying that freight every month. So what about using that? What places for people to go to take refuge? I mean, we need to open up what now are new resources. This is part of this paradigm shift that I can't, um, I, that I'm thinking has got to come about. And it's all going to come from us, the citizen, figuring out what do we do in these new circumstances and how are we going to benefit our world to get back to at least uh, our prosperity again it might not look the same but it can look different and we can still be prosperous and, and get it, people fed and taken right? care of well you know Winston, we, you know, we have the these people. two factors that are that are that are uh, on both sides of us we're in a kind of dilemma on the one hand if we don't do it right uh we'll get sick more of us will get sick more of us will die it'll be 1919 all over again and worse um, the other, the other factor, uh, the risks, uh, the risk of domestic violence, of crime, um, you know, of a failed supply line for, for food. I mean, these are great risks. So we have both of these things working on us. And in the middle, in the middle, we have Dr. Fauci, Dr. Fauci, the, the only rational person on the stage who sticks with it. Most, most of the time, I think he's been compromised on some occasions, but uh, to tell us, what did he say? It's not time yet, okay? And I would go with him, I think, as to when it is time. But don't you worry about Dr. Fauci. He's one of those guys who, who was on Trump's fire list. And soon enough, I think we're gonna see him fired. So can we rely on him? Will he help us? Is there anyone else in, in the White House who will help us? How are we going to make this decision? The decision seems already corrupted. How are we going to decide this critical issue between these two, you know, chasms? What do you think? Well, there's not, they're not going to be one opening date, honestly. This, it's going to be many. Uh, when you have New York right in the throes of this, where you have, you have so many people dying. Um, whereas here in Hawaii, I just saw while we, our, our show was going on, it says um, we have 530 here as of today, which is uh, April 15th uh, on Civil Beat. And it says 70% of the cases documented by the Department of Health have been released from isolation. So more than half of the of folks have recovered here. We may be looking at being able to go very quickly COVID-free Hawaii, which is interesting. Uh, it means that the crime with and especially control of the population going uh, um, that uh, we may have a specific advantage uh, for opening up tourism earlier in other locations. Uh, imagine you get your COVID um, ID check, your stamp before you come over here from LA or you're COVID free, you get to come on your vacation to Hawaii. Uh, you could charge twice as much for the beautiful beaches here. I, it, there's a, a lot of different um, scenarios that, that we might be looking at in ways that's gonna restart the economy um, that we don't know, and we don't need to know all the answers right now, but we do need to do this in a way that is sane. Um, you know, I just, another thing that came in while we were talking is, it says Trump threatens, and, and the Hill, Trump threatens to adjourn both chambers of Congress. This just came out while we were talking, and uh, he says, perhaps it's never done been done before. Nobody is sure if it ever has been, but we're going to do it. Uh, you know, when you're dealing with someone uh, who's just throws things out like this, um, it's so um disconcerting to have a coherent logical response to anything but when you're faced with the with the pandemic uh we have to rely on our own local government control as much as possible combined where maybe the states are getting into packs together and opening up different regions at different times that's appropriate to them um what donald trump is going to do probably is just say oh you can open up from may 1st and if you open up sooner we'll give you some more candy to do that i, I don't know how he's going to walk that one back but um you know, some revelation will come out and it, it'll happen. It's terrifying. And, and something actually on Trump, which we predicted a year ago, 
that he would try to, you know, dissolve, just like Hitler did in 1933. Uh, with the Enabling Act of 1933, he, uh, he completely, uh, you know, es essentially, he dissolved the Reichstag, both houses. They both voted for a bill uh, that allowed him to make the legislation, which is where he's heading now in, in the name of uh, national emergency. And wait till oh, we get to November. I mean, there's yeah. a great risk to this country that, uh, you know, if there's a national emergency or arguably a national or what he thinks is a national emergency, we yes. won't have our election after all this time. Um, you know, I, sometimes I think uh, there was there must be a place in the world that I could go to to be safe, to be safe from the unraveling of our democracy, which has going on for at least three years and to be safe from this, this uh, pandemic. But you know what? I'm not sure there is a place in the whole world I could go to to be safe. Uh, is, it a, is it a time to travel now? Um, where would you go? And isn't it better to stay in Hawaii? That's also a complex question. Stephanie, what do you think? I, I am amazed that, that you articulate those fears so well. I think that um, I was thinking about a Dr. Fauci being out on the plank. He's walking the plank and he's saying what he's going to say no matter because he's a scientist. And so um, I think all of us are walking the plank because we are unfortunate enough to be in this crisis with, with a leader that's not a leader and can't do the leadership that we need to have for this. So it is tr tremendously frightening and um, who knows Hawaii may be a place to be, but we have a leadership issue here too. So at no time has that been a greater need is to have so, uh, people um, in, in the positions of authority and policy makers to, to do the kinds of things that will lead us uh, into a safe place because we're not there now. So No, we're I not. So uh, we only have a minute left here. Uh, Cynthia, what are your closing words to our audience? Uh, what would you like to leave them today? Well, I think there's hope in the people. We can't have hope in our government right now, but I think we can put hope in in people. When we see people going to just extreme measures to help our first responders and our front line. And so I think we need to support those people as much as possible, especially if we're going to end up with a second wave. Winston, you're always good at making me feel better. Uh, what are your closing words? What message you want to leave? You know, you mentioned about democracy. Where's the place to go? The place to go is always on Think Tech because this is where democracy, where we talk about all kinds of issues. This is the place to be. And Hawaii is a great place always to, to be at. We've got a low rate here. Um, I do want to, um, you know, stress that it's, it's up to all of us. To share aloha with each other. Be kind to each other. Be kind to yourself. This too shall pass. Uh, we're going to go about it the best ways we can. We need as much information as we can. We need to be an open society. With a look at the best models, uh, apply those to um, different locations, and see what works out. But we will get through this on the other side, and uh, we will be stronger and more resilient because of it. Yeah, yeah, and and I have a, a last word too. All that. All that is right on, except one thing we got to have, testing. We got to have testing. We can't it's deal coming. with this without testing. And we don't, it's coming, right? It's coming. What, what have you been drinking? It's coming, it's coming. Uh, anyway, when we, <laughs> when, when we have the testing, we can all feel better. Okay, Stephanie, thank you very much. Uh, Cynthia, thank you very much. Winston, thank you very much. A great thank discussion. You. Thank Talk you, Talk to you next time. Aloha. You. Aloha. Aloha.